A great afternoon for football in Colorado Springs, especially when the hometown team has made its way into the top 25. The Falcons host the Rams in a front range rivalry. Well, traveling down I-25, two hours, the Colorado State Rams trying to make something of this season. Only one win to date, and they'll be doing it in enemy territory. The lean and mean guys up front and it's a rushing machine here. The number one rushing offense in the nation, led by the big dogs up front. Well, calling them big if you want to. Only one of them weighs over 260 pounds. Here's a guy who weighs about 260. Todd Christensen, I'm James Bates. Glad to have you with us this afternoon. And it might surprise you who leads this Falcon team in rushing. It really does because usually in a triple option situation, you have your left halfback or your quarterback or even the right halfback, which might be the guy. No, in this case, it's the fullback. Only 217 pounds. Jared, too, has been tremendous this year. You see those numbers. Included in those numbers is 96 yards per game, including the fact but he is yet to lose a single yard this season. Now, on the other side, you've got Ricky Brewer, the leading tackler for CSU, averaging nine tackles per game. Two years ago right here, he had 15 tackles against the Falcons, and he's going to have to have a light productivity if CSU is to triumph today. College football on the mountain is brought to you by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge, grab life. By Old Chicago Restaurants. Eat, drink, and be yourself. By Domino's, who wants everyone to try their inspired pizza. Get two medium, two topping pieces for just $5.99 each. And by Jeep, the most award-winning brand of 4x4s ever. Check out the entire lineup at Jeep.com. Oh, they're rocking, trying to let the Rams know they're in enemy territory. It's the Falcons and the Rams when we come back. College Football on the Mountain is brought to you by your Colorado Toyota dealer. Toyota, moving forward. By Wendy's, serving anything but fresh food is an illegal procedure. At Wendy's, you know when it's real. By Fleer, extraordinary vision. And by American Family Insurance, is your coverage as unique as your family? Find out at amfam.com slash family. Imposing planes around the Air Force Academy, and speaking of opposing, that tunnel for the opponents, right, Natalie Vickers? Oh, that is right, James. I thought I dressed appropriately, but they said 69. It feels like 75, and absolutely beautiful. No wind down here. You mentioned that tunnel. It is something that CSU Rams had to deal with coming in, because just minutes ago, the Rams players had to make their way through what has been voted by the players as the most difficult tunnel in the Mountain West. Each player has to go through a barrage of loud, rowdy Air Force cadets as you hear screaming here about the altitude, lack of oxygen. To expect that Falcon Fanatics could get into team test, but you know that man at the helm, Steve Fairchild, he's been here a long time in the Mountain West, and you can be sure he gave his team a heads up. We'll see how they come out of the gate, guys. <laughs> well, Coach Fairchild, even he can appreciate the flyover by the F-16s. 3-0 and as a player, and 0-2 as a head coach with his Rams. Our Ram keys to the game brought to you by Ram, award-winning Ram trucks plus a new heavy duty, make it one of the most powerful lineups in Ram history, Todd. Colorado State's only averaging 56 yards per game rushing. They need to do much better today. Any kind of daylight, they've got to get the running game going. Third down and out, they've got to get they've got to get Air Force off the field defensively. They haven't been they've been ineffective in that up to this point. Air Force needs to waste some time. Time of possession, five and a half minutes more than anybody else. And the question for Tom Thomas says they want to confuse the young freshman quarterback, put some problems in his head early on. Troy Calhoun in his fourth season. We've got two head coaches both playing back at their alma maters. Three both trips in the first three seasons for the head man of the Air Force Academy, the 25th ranked team in the nation. The Lion and the Rams looking for an upset today. And here comes Warzika across the 20. Pretty good coverage on the part of Colorado State. Austin Gray is the one who was able to make the tackle there. And you see Tim Jefferson's numbers. Those are throwing numbers, of course. Remember, Jefferson is primarily a running quarterback. 343 yards on the season, and he has seven rushing touchdowns, James. Clay Hendricks, the offensive coordinator, and Trey, Troy Calhoun able to get a little bit more creative with the junior running the show. Option first play, Asher Clark, first down. 
Uh, starting lineups for the Falcons brought to you by Wendy's. Serving anything but fresh food is an illegal procedure at Wendy's. You know when it's real. 261 pounds only. The average of the guys up front and Clark and two both on track to get 1,000 yards this season. That has only been done once here in Air Force Falcon football history. Jefferson and the whole crew will check over with the sidelines. First play from scrimmage resulted in a first down. And again the keeper, and here's another pitch. That one goes to Kyle Halderman. D'Angelo Wilkinson comes up to make the tackle, but James, you know, it didn't look like it was much, and then suddenly it's nine yards. The offensive line early on, despite their lack of size, James has dominated. To the lone back in motion is Joshua Freeman. First pass play for Jefferson, and all alone, Joshua Freeman. Down inside the 10-yard line, and here come the Falcons. Late flag came down. Well, Ricky Brewer evidently hit the quarterback late, but I'm wondering who was in coverage there because that was just completely a busted play. Great call on the part of the offensive Cotton to setting for Air Force, bringing the ball so effectively going for play action and wide open in the flat. Clark up to the wing spot. Halderman on the other side, and the lone back is Jared too, yet to touch the ball. In this game, a 51-yard pickup on the previous play. Jared, two, and it's just too easy. Touchdown, Falcons. You know, James, it's interesting that you pointed out 260 pounds per man for the offensive line, some 40 pounds less than Colorado State and most of the other teams around the nation. Nevertheless, they were dominant early on here in this particular drive. They created some chasms for those runners. Colton Reed the snap, Cochran the hold, and Soderberg puts it throw. Quick strike. Well, we talked about Jared too earlier, and two just is able to knife through. But take a look. Take a look at what ends up happening in motion. Nobody goes with him, and when he comes out in motion, and nobody's going to go with him, he's just wide open. Just, just wide open is Freeman, the reserve tight end. This is a great job by Warzika of running everybody off. And of course, Sisson in this case is unable. Great hustle on the part of Sisson to run him down, but the coverage just was not there. And you can see that's not one of those time of possession drives that normally Air Force has instead of a minute and a half to go 77 yards. Very impressive by the Air Force offense here in the initial drive of the game. And that drive summary brought to you by the most award-winning brand of 4x4s ever, Jeep. Check out the entire lineup at jeep.com. Schweiss, the freshman, is indeed kicking off, James. A retired Lieutenant Colonel. Schweiss's father, he takes it to the paint. Here comes John Mosier. And one of three true freshman quarterbacks starting in the Mountain West Conference this season. Steve Fairchild has high hopes for this young man who graduated from high school in Southern California early. Went through spring practice and he holds the lone win for freshman starters in the conference. Raymond Carter, his starting tailback, not here with the injured knee, will miss a couple weeks. So instead, they go to Leonard Mason. Mason scoots out around the edge for about a five-yard pickup. Colorado State's lineup's brought to you by your Colorado Toyota dealer. Toyota, moving forward, Mark Starr, 
Glad to have him back at the strong tackle position. They base a lot of the offense around him. There's Leonard Mason starting and Zach Pauga, one of the best fullbacks around. And there's big Zach, the former rugby player, buries his head forward for about three yards. So it'll be a third down and two coming up against the defense. He doesn't like giving up points or first downs. Payne, Gardner, and Sticky Ricky Ricketts at the defensive line spots. Amac banged up a little bit, but will play. YY Ole has really been special. And John Davis, the safety, has been a big play machine for Troy Calhoun and the Falcons this year. That's the fullback, Hauga, lined up at the bottom of your screen. To the air and hooking up a first down. Tyson Liggett on the catch, and so the sticks will move for the Rams. Excellent job by Liggett in setting down in the soft spot of the zone. Not only that, as you see the numbers, he's the leading receiver for the team heading into this game, but a little confidence for Thomas to make an easy throw and get a nice third down conversion. Well, he's holding that left forearm or hand, and already it's a banged up unit. As we mentioned, no Raymond Carter, TJ Borky, the starting receiver, didn't practice all week. Here's a handoff to Mason, a trap play. And able to get a few yards out of it when it looked like he'd be stuffed for a loss. Well, we talked about the difference in the offensive lines, James, but here's what's happening with Colorado State. We're talking about their defensive line. The defensive line for Air Force is also right around 260 pounds. And so they're gonna, they're gonna put their, they're going to put their splits close together. They're gonna try and replicate what Wyoming did two years ago, two, excuse me, two weeks ago, when they ran it all so effectively there in Laramie. Bailing zone coverage, Reggie Rembert, and there's the soft edge as Leonard Mason comes pounding. Mason had nearly 100 yards rushing, and it was a first half that the Rams had a lot of success on the ground up in Fort Collins last year against Air Force. Take a look at the point of attack, and you can see the blue shirts are going backwards, and Leonard Mason is a very good north and south runner. He doesn't look as big, but he's about 210, 215. And you can see right there, great job by Starr at the point of an attack, enabling Mason to get to the outside and get yet another first down for the Rams. It's Mosier who replaces Mason next to Thomas in the backfield. And they try to set up the wide receiver screen to Lou Greenwood, the former running back, incomplete. So a second down and 10 coming up for the Rams. And that's one that Thomas wants back for this reason, James. Now when you come up second and long, even if he gets the ball down and he gets tackled to feel a player for only a three or four yard game, you can still run the ball. Now second and 10, you're forced maybe to have to go up top. And that frustrates Fairchild a little bit because that was not a difficult throw for Thomas. Tried to hook up there with Steele, threw it behind him. Y.Y. Ole, the linebacker over there to break it up. Pete Thomas needs three yards to pass up the long, tall Texan, Caleb Haney, who back in 2004 threw for over 1,200 yards. And Justin Holland injured his leg early in that season, and the freshman came out gunslinging, set the all-time freshman record at Colorado State, but one more pass completion. And it should belong to Pete Thomas, who's got a lot of ball left to be played here in his first year. The blitz is on. And standing in there strong is Thomas, but underthrows his intended receiver. Jordan Y.Y. Ole, who was so effective last week against Navy with 15 tackles. He's the one that comes in and puts the hit on Thomas, hence the reason why the ball was short. Look at the top of your screen. Here they come. Y.Y. Ole, the 6'3", 230-pounder, drops him. Forces him to throw a little bit short, and now CSU is going to have to punt. Here's our first look at a new long snapper for the Rams. It's Tanner Hedstrom, Scott Albritton, one of the best in college ball, was injured against TCU. And a 
touchback will be oh, called. Wow, very unfortunate. Got all those white shirts down there, and they're not, unable to keep it out. Hedstrom does a nice job, but even better was Contodiakos. What a great punt, but he just couldn't keep it in the field of play. A little bit frustrating here. Look at all the white shirts waiting, but it goes through the hands. Here's Hurd. He's across the goal line. Nope, out to the 20. So a stand by the Air Force Falcon defense. They're getting kind of used to that around here in Colorado Springs. Another thing they're getting used to, some good running. Let's take a look at the top four teams in college ball. Well, no surprise here. Then Art Robinson and his Michigan Wolverines, the Heisman favorite at this point of the season. LaMichael James, Darren Thomas doing things on the ground for the Oregon Ducks at three. And how about the showing of the redshirt freshman Taylor Martinez and the Nebraska Cornhuskers on Thursday night. But number one in the land, guess who? The Air Force Falcons. And the highlight of those first three teams, when you look at the top four, Todd, you've got Robinson, you've got Martinez. With the Falcons, you've got a plethora of backs carrying the rock. A plethora? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and back to the pitch and getting the edge is Asher Clark. He took the first pitch of the game for a first down and same result here as the chains will move. And the same result in terms of another great lead block, this time from, from Jonathan Warzika. Gets him on the ground, another cut block. Watch the lead here, watch number 15. And look at the white shirt that's on the ground that enables Asher Clark to not even get touched until he's gone about eight or nine yards. And Asher Clark again, this time between the tackles. And up to midfield, Clark. And the Falcons. Here's your Toyota starting lineups for the Colorado State Rams. And Guy Miller, Ty Whittier, they need a big game from the guys inside. Brewer, Williams, and Sisson, pretty good linebacking crew. And the safeties. Ivory heard a big part of this game against the rushing attack. A step and a catch. Zach Cow had a couple steps on Dominique Vincent. And another big hookup. It was a 51-yard reception on the first drive. And this time, they go to Kalt at the bottom. Take a look at what happens right here with the play action. And all three receivers going downfield are going to be wide open. He had his choice. Look at that. He had three blue shirts wide open as a result of the play action. And back to the ground. Great blocking up front before Ivory Hurd comes over there and goes helmet to helmet with Asher Clark. And we're in the infrared zone, brought to you by FLIR Extraordinary Vision. Not just the red zone, the infrared zone. And a second down and goal now from the three yard line. A flag before the Falcons could get rolling, this one might be on its way back. Asher Clark did lunge across the goal line. I, I think that the, the Colorado State's offsides. Yeah. The guy that threw the flag is the same one that signaled touchdown, James, so that's usually an indication that, uh, yeah, it's good. Interesting to point out here, James, these two, these two short touchdown runs, those are the two shortest plays that Air Force has had thus far in these two drives. Terry Layden, our head referee, replay official Thomas Robinson up in the booth this afternoon. Look at Steve Fairchild. We're trying to decide as to whether or not this was a touchdown. Take a look and decide for yourselves. You know what? Simultaneously, he goes across with the knee. So I'm thinking that this isn't, isn't something that they're going to overrule, but instead, You'll see the knee go down. There it is in the field of play, but he's also across. You can see right here, the ball is already across the goal line. So I'm assuming that's six for number 17. Rolled a touchdown on the field. If it stands, which it should, it would be touchdowns on 
the only two drives to start this football game this afternoon for Troy Calhoun and the Air Force Falcons against Nevada a couple weeks ago in a 51 to 6 loss the Rams let Colin Kaepernick and the Wolfpack score every time they touch the ball on offense getting a little bit more of the same here Team's already 154 yards in total offense for Air Force in those two long drives. And this is a Colorado State defense that really held its own against one of the TCU better right. offensive attacks in the land last week against TCU, only giving up two field goals at halftime. Soderbergh's extra point is through. So the Falcons putting it in the paint on the ground, but getting down there through the air. Jefferson, does that count? 39-yard pickup, and the Falcons on top by 14. And we're back next Saturday, a big-time matchup in Cowtown as the BYU Cougars try to stop the Horn Frogs of TCU down in Texas. It's at 3.30 Eastern, 1.30 Mountain on versus We Know the Mountain West. First things first for BYU. They've got San Diego State this afternoon on the mountain. That's where Troy Calhoun and the Falcons will go next week as they'll take on Brady Hoke and the surprise team at this point in the Mountain West Conference, the gutty little Aztecs who are favored in Provo this afternoon. Twice again. And here comes Tyson Liggett. Kick that Derek Good. 26 returning that ball. And there's your Jeep drive summary. Most award winning brand of 4 by 4s ever. Jeep.com. You can check out the entire lineup. Well, once again, you have a long drive in a short period of time. 80 plays in a minute nine. Of course, it's a long throw to Cal that shortened the drive. And you can see the total yards right there. Air Force averaging over 17 yards a play. Wow. Thomas with time, hits his fullback, Hoga, and a couple pops. To number the Jack bowling ball Hoga. down there, making a couple guys in blue jerseys. Andre Morris with the same number. Yeah. Isn't that what you do? You come and say, hey, buddy, I got your number, and oh, wow, I really do. A nice effort on the part of Paunga to get that extra yardage, second and very short now. Well, that completion, of course, over four yards. It went nine, so Pete Thomas. More importantly, we'd like to try to answer those first two Air Force scores. We go to the ground, and Pete Thomas has passed Caleb Haney. The carry for the Rams. the all-time. Uh, uh, James, obviously they've been hit with a thunderbolt, no pun intended, where the lightning bolts are concerned. But with 8.17 remaining in the first quarter, clock running down 14 nothing. There's no reason to abandon the running game. It was very effective for them there on that first drive. They just had an incomplete pass, <clears throat> and then were forced to throw three times. They need to stay with that running game. And the Rams have fallen so far behind in so many games, it's been tough to stay in that power run game that Steve Fairchild really hung his hat on in the oh, NFL yeah, and in year yeah. one. And it was a Ram team that wasn't picked to do anything. And with six wins, and then win number seven coming in a bowl trip to the New Mexico Bowl and Fairchild's first season behind the running of Gartrell Johnson. Worth noting as you see that graphic, there was a quarterback 30 years ago, right now, James, 30 years ago, and he was the quarterback they defeated Air Force, 21 to nine, Fairchild for 322 yards and three touchdowns in that game. A little screen to the fullback, a slip screen, and Paunga takes it up near the 50 yard line. They needed just over the 50 into Falcon territory for a first. This one will be close. Zach Payne, the defensive lineman, retreating, and it will be enough for a 
a Ram first down. Good call on the part of the offensive staff. Easy throw, conservative off to the side. Get that first down across midfield. And there is the graphic that you pointed out, James, with regards to the freshman quarterback record for yards. Congratulations, Pete Thomas. New first and ten line up there for you. Brought to you by Remax, a sign you want, the agent you need. Lead play right up the gut and powering hard is Leonard Mason. And again, a first down. They keep going to that right side, James. They must have something going there. As you can see right here, take a look at the attack and look at the hole. He's able to run through. And of course, people are occupied. Sometimes you see those blue shirts and you say, well, why aren't they making the play? Well, they're occupied with the offensive lineman. Can't get their arms out. And as a result, Mason able to run through them for the first down. There's the dive play and the ball on the ground. Oh, that's a, well, I tell you, that is heads up on the part of Richburg, the center. Because that would have been really costly. Very nice play in the middle of the middle of the line for Colorado State. And the ball comes out, they can ill afford a turnover at this point. Richburg, a red shirt freshman, the center for Steve Fairchild. And Gary Patterson admitted to us getting ready for the Rams last week that he might have missed one on letting Richburg get out of Amarillo, Texas. Right near at Bushland High School. And Bam! They're in a hurry as Brian Lindsay, the defensive backs in this Falcon secondary will blitz more than any team in the nation. And the run blitz, blitz there paying off for the Falcons. Well, he, he just comes, he, he's going to come over here off the side just completely untouched. Well, he's just not accounted for. Able to drop him for a loss. And now instead of third and one, they, they're coming up now third and three. Falcons bring just three, plenty of time for Thomas. And setting up just past the sticks and a completion for a first down, Tyson Liggett. Well, good that his hand isn't hurt. That's a great job by Liggett of coming back to the quarterback. They decide not to blitz in this case and they come back and cover. They only rush with three and that enables Thomas to have plenty of time to survey the field. Liggett's about his third choice. He's able to deliver the ball on the money down to the 25 for a first down. Number 23's got some great hands. We've seen him make some serious catches. Outstanding athlete in this CSU offense, number 23. From the lineman, Colorado, first down. And here's a wide receiver screen. Lou Greenwood up across the 20 yard line. Nice looking pickup to bring up a second and short. Lick it out front. Gives him the lead block, enabling him to get inside the 20 yard line to the 19. Luke Greenwood, they're looking for that average to jump. They need him to make some big plays. He's one of the real speedsters on this team as number one, the converted running back. Rams into the infrared zone one more time. Brought to you by Fleer, extraordinary vision. The handoff and stumbling as he twists out of a would-be tackler, Leonard Mason has the first down and he was seeing end zone, but couldn't keep his feet underneath it. Richburg does a great job with the nose tackle here with the block. Take a look at Richburg right here and how he's able to move the nose tackle out of the way. Great job by Paunga leading in, actually gets two guys. Nice 360 move on the part of Mason. Just couldn't quite keep his feet, but still able to get the first down. Bunch set at the bottom. Lone back is Mason. Mason gets nice it. Caught. And Brian Lindsay, who's had a heck of a day, saves a touchdown. Mason tried to fight him off and get into the end zone, but stopped a couple yards shy. They can get a first down, the Falcons, here at the one-yard line. This is a great job of using his vision. That play was designed to go to the right side, but he cuts back against the grain as Air Force over pursues. Gets some nice yardage inside the five. And that's unfortunate. 
You know what, James? It, it, it feels as if when you're inside the five or inside the ten, if you get a five-yard penalty, it's almost like it's double the yardage, you know, when you go backwards. It, it's just so frustrating because you're so close and you've done so many good things up to this point. Now second and nine instead of second and four, it's kind of a situation where now you gotta, you know, you're forced to throw, and they've been running the ball so effectively. Did you see that 66 to 64? Wouldn't you? Did you ever think CSU would outrush Air Force at any point in this game? Not this year. So here's your second and nine. And Mason takes it one more time. And that was, as we saw the shot of Steve Fairchild, Todd, we talked to him this week on our conference call, inconsistency, inconsistency. And that's exactly what you got. You go down there and you drive, you're trying to answer. And the inconsistencies have been driving this bunch crazy. A lot of young guys. One thing to think about here, James, is it could be four down territory, so they could still run the ball. And they do just that. Swallowed up about two yards shy of the first down is Leonard Mason. Well, James, I'm thinking of 14 to nothing, and the defense has given no indication that they're able to slow these people down. And sure enough, they are going to go for it here on fourth down. I give Fairchild credit. You say to yourself, why would you do this? It's so early in the game. Why not get some points? It's because of the struggles of the defense. Thomas, it's batted away. Just as they've done all year long, this Air Force Falcon defense stiffens in the red zone. So three for three for Thomas on that drive. They drive it the length of the field, but come up empty, and the Falcon defense prevails. And back here in Colorado Springs, we're the number 25 team in the nation, the Air Force Falcons on top 14 to nothing. It looked like the Rams were going to chip into that 14-0 lead, but standing that Air Force defense. Our out-of-town scoreboard brought to you by REMAX, the sign you want, the agent you need. The number five team in the nation, the TCU Horned Frogs, hosting the Wyoming Cowboys without Austin Carter Samuels later today. BYU and San Diego State will be on the mountain. Brady Hoax team coming off a bye week. Here's the dive. Give to Jared too. Let's go back to the fourth down play, knocking on the door for the Ram offense. Take a look at Chris Wolke. He's going to be running a loop route, and Thomas just looks downfield all the time. If he just goes out to his right a little bit, Wolke is able to walk into the end zone, but he fixates on the one receiver, and the ball gets batted down. That was a little bit frustrating. And with experience, he'll be able to see more of the field, but I'm sure that that's one he'd like back. Second down and six again. Back-to-back -back gives to the fullback two. Doesn't look like much, but it only result, results in two carries and a first down when you had your back against the wall. And frustrating if you got to be Colorado State because certainly part of the thinking process of Steve Fairchild was, okay, if we don't get it, they've got to go a long field. Well, Air Force is certainly capable of that with that running game, and as you mentioned, their fullback Jared, too. Pitch to Asher Clark. Coaches tell us that Tim Jefferson may be the best that's ever come through here at running the option. And that, well, that's saying a lot. That is saying a heck of a lot. Jefferson, a junior, started as a freshman, and we mentioned that they've gotten a little bit more creative as he's gotten some starts underneath his belt. And here's a handoff going the wrong way for the Falcons, but he ran the option back in Atlanta at Woodward Academy in high school. Only threw it about two times a game. And his two throws in this game have resulted in big time numbers. And it's 14 to nothing. Most important number of all for the Cadets and the Air Force Falcons. That's it. One quarter in the books. The Falcons on top, 14 to nothing. Halloween officially a couple weeks away, but it's always Halloween in Section 8. 
here at the Air Force Academy. This copyrighted telecast of the Mountain West Conference is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience and any retransmission, reproduction, rebroadcast, or other use of dissemination of this telecast or the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Mountain West Conference is prohibited. New Section 8 t-shirts, NASCAR influence they look like. Well, this is the first third down of the game for Jefferson and the Falcons. And 52% just got even better, 52% on the year. First keeper of the afternoon for the junior quarterback, and it results in a first down. The misdirection is what fools Colorado State. They hadn't run that. Take a look at the white shirts heading to the top. And now there's a situation with Jefferson. All he needs to do is get that first down. It's got to be frustrating for Colorado State, James, because they, as you pointed out, third and six, a great opportunity to get off the field, but they're unable to do it. Play action pass, looking to go up top. And Zach Kalp, who caught a 39-yarder earlier in the game, gets tangled up with Elijah Blue Smith. No flags. And this is what Air Force is able to do to you, James, and that is, is that Elijah Blue Smith is a safety. He's usually not man for man on people. But in this case, he has to be because of the way they have the setup in terms of rushing. That's a nice job by Blue Smith, hand fighting Cal. Good no call there. And here's the pitch, Jefferson. Letting it go at the last possible second, Asher Clark. Barrels forward for a couple, and here comes a late flag. Indicated by two, it might be a chop block. Out for a block on the play. Third down. So they'll wave it off. Terry Layden's microphone was breaking up, but I think he did say there's no flag for chop block on the play. And, and once again, another third down third opportunity for Colorado field. State to get off the field. Third and three. They do just that. Great job by Guy Miller in staying with the fullback and not getting fooled. And he looks over at the fish and says, no, 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 I'm not, no, no, I'm not doing anything wrong. Because for a brief minute there, you know, they thought there'd be the conversation and get the, get the flag. Instead, Miller penetrates. Great job, Larry Kerr, defensive coordinator, has to be pleased with that. As the initial punt of the game by Bartholomew for Air Force will come to fruition. Guy Miller, former big wrestler in Scott City, Kansas. Liggett awaits the Bartholomew punt. Wow. And he'll have to backtrack a little bit. Over his head. And from his own eight, tripped up. Great coverage by this Air Force. Special teams, a 53-yard punt. And great coverage to go along with the Bartholomew punt. So again, long field to go for the Rams. I am here with this guy. This is Chris Thomas. This is Pete Thomas's big brother. And I want to talk to you, big brother, because this must be a tough situation to see your little bro out there playing football against your team and struggling. You know what? They're fighting hard. Air Force is playing real well. Doesn't seem like CSU can stop their triple option right now. But uh, CSU had a pretty good drive going down the field, and hopefully they can score some points. They did. And I, you, you were telling me a story about your about your little brother when you were a senior on your high school team. He was brought up uh, to be a quarterback as well as a kicker, right, uh, for the team, and he started then. So he had success early on in his career. How tough has this been, this transition into the college level? You know what? He had great training from his quarterback coach, George Whitfield, uh, all through high school, and that really prepared him for uh, starting at the D1 level. Um, for CSU, so. We did that green story. You have a green shirt underneath there? No, I don't. I can't wear uh, in uniform. I can't, so. That was CSU green, guys. Thank you, Natalie. Chris was a wrestler here at the Air Force Academy. And his brother Pete going back to the air. And not much there for Liggett as the Falcon defense breaks on it in a hurry. That time it was John Davis 
on the stop. That last drive, it was a 14-play, 73-yard drive, and prior to the fourth down attempt that was knocked down, Thomas went three for three, and it ate up seven minutes and 37 seconds on the clock. But here's a third down and 11 with your ball at the at your own 11-yard line. Falcons bring just three. Tried to throw it in there, and it's picked off. Reggie Rembert, interception and inside the five-yard line. Reggie Rembert does a great job of baiting him into this throw. It appears that he's open, but Re Rembert is a sharp guy able to come off of his coverage and make the play in the middle of the field. Watch number eight, you're gonna see, he's gonna come off from the middle of the field playing center field and just make an easy interception. And one of the things, James, we talked about with Coach Calhoun, one of the impressive parts of that secondary is the ability of these young, peop these young people in the secondary to catch the football. So many times it seems like you, you go from game to game and you see at least one interception dropped by a defensive back. Rembert makes a great catch and gets the ball inside the five for the Air Force offense. All, all Mountain West Conference performer last year. That's Ryan Gardner, injured on the play. We'll check on him when we come back. Well, no longer a dusting on the Rocky Mountains. There's snow up in them our hills. The United States Air Force Academy, home to the Falcons, the 25th ranked team in the nation, already up 14 to nothing. And Reggie Rembert's interception has put Jefferson in the Falcon offense inside the five yard line to start this drive. Two, with the carry. two gets the carry on first down. Josh Hall, the defensive back, does a great job of funneling the receiver inside, enabling Rembert to make. He knows that he's got help inside. There's a bracket coverage. Greenwood fades a little bit on the route, and that's the inexperience of somebody who hasn't played the wide receiver position. But Rembert does a great job of baiting the quarterback into throwing that ball in the, in the middle of the field, and as a result, getting a turnover. Again, the dive, and again, not much there for two. Ball popped out. The senior put it on the turf, and the Rams say they have it. Oh, that's huge. Michael Sisson, look at that. Helmet is off, and he refuses to give the ball up. I tell you what, you got to like the fight in number six right there. A guy who's got two bad knees, a bad shoulder, comes into this game with all sorts of health problems, and there he comes up with a big turnover. I tell you what, up to this point, James, I know it's, I, we, we know the score and that would have solved it. But watch, I, I tell you what, a great job by Ko, uh, Kowalczyk getting across. And Sisson is the one who strips him of the ball. Now, one of the things, I, I'm sure that they're probably going to review this, but I think Kowalczyk has him on top of somebody. And that's the reason why he wasn't down. Looked like he rolled over the body of right. Ivory Hurd. Correct. And that's what they're going to take a look at. Kowalik does a great job of sticking his nose in there and holding on to him long enough for Sisson to come over and make the play. Watch for yourself. Here it is right here. Kowalik comes in and makes the play. Watch back here. Here's Sisson who's going to come off of the play and strips him. Now look, he's on top of Kowalik, so he's not down. He's not down. That is going to be a turnover for Colorado State. And again, I come back to Sisson, and, and, and what a warrior he is. We're talking about a linebacker, folks. He's 5'11", 209 pounds. Not a bruiser by any stretch of the imagination, but continues to make big play after big play for the Rams. As we send it up to Thomas Robinson, the replay official will give a different angle here. And it, bottom line is Jared Tu never touches the turf. Correct. That's it. You're absolutely right, James. And, and you can see, and, and, and see, you know what? You and I talk about this all the time. You, the body language of the player who had the ball tells you a lot. You saw that two looked back and wanted to know where the ball is, as opposed to sometimes, you know, you'll get the guy will stand up and just point at the ground and say, I was down, I was down.
After review, the ruling on the field stands. Fumble recovered by Colorado State. First down. Well, Michael Sisson all smiles for the former Duncanville Panther. One of many Texas guys on this Colorado State team. A big play maker. That's the way coaches from the Rams and opponents alike will describe number six. And even with all the injuries that he's battled through, he continues to make big plays for the Rams. But look at this now, starting on their own three-yard line. Here comes Pete Thomas and Mason in Colorado State. Average starting field position, the 22-yard line for the Rams today. James, this is where having a veteran quarterback is really helpful. The young quarterback, you're, you're not going to risk anything with him back here because of the field position. But if you had a veteran quarterback, you might want to air one out, take a shot, because Air Force obviously is going to bunch in, you know, put the eight in the box, and hopefully get a three and out and get field position. A lot of pressure on the O-line here for Colorado State to knock people off the ball. Here's play action pass from his own end zone. Thomas again goes to the middle, and this time, Liggett had his hands on it, but it was broken up by Reggie Rembert. And look, just so you, just so you know, Reggie Rembert, for, for those of you that are out there want to understand something, this is five foot seven and 185 pounds. Liggett comes back, he's got the catch, but Rem, Rembert just has great closing quickness and able to separate him from the ball. I mentioned the size factor because I think that there are some young people out there. Don't worry about the size. Third down and seven. The blitz off the edge, a nice play call. They set up the tight end screen. Pites has a first down, and it's a huge one for the Ram offense. That's a great call because they did come with some extra rushers and pites the tight end. It's a play they have not used. In fact, James, you and I have had a couple of Colorado State games. I think I've only seen that once in about three games, but Pites is able to get behind. Wow, that's a nice block by Starr. He just creams Anthony <laughs> right out of the way. Huge first down for the Rams. Pauga and Mason. The eye backs behind Thomas. First down and 10, Colorado State. Here's another lead play, bending it back. And the ball on the ground. Another turnover, and it's picked up by, guess who, Reggie Rembert. Had an interception on the last drive, and it's Johnny on the spot with the fumble recovery here. And what's interesting about this, James, is it appears that as soon as he's going to be going to have the collision, Mason has both hands over the ball. Take a look as he cuts through. Now watch, he comes out. Now, now watch what he does with the right hand. He, he covers it up. But still, still as a result, it's Jonathan Davis who's able to put a helmet on the football and get the ball out despite the fact that he has two hands on the ball. I don't know why there should be a review. That was clearly a fumble. And frustrating if you're Mason because you got that big hole and you had a first down and things going for the Rams. But that's definitely going to be a turnover. I, I know that. Colorado State has challenged the ruling on the previous play of a fumble and recovery by Air Force. Well, I know that Steve Fairchild is getting the advice from upstairs, and at the 14 to nothing here, we don't want to give the ball up at the 33-yard line, but that's definitely a fumble. His elbow did not hit the ground first. Well, and Steve Fairchild told us this week, he said, you know, with Raymond Carter being out, it's the guy that gets hot and the guy that holds on to the football. Leonard Mason, 74 yards on 13 carries, was hot. But there you see in what will be three turnovers on the last three drives for the Rams, you can't fumble the football and stay on the field for Steve Fairchild, for any coach for that matter. And once again, you see Mason reaching for the football. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Colorado State will be charged a timeout and has lost their challenge opportunity. The last three drives for both of those coaches have resulted in turnovers and Leonard Mason over on the sideline. We Set up a new first and ten line, what looked to be for the Rams instead for the Falcon offense. Brought to you by Remax, the sign you want, the agent you need. Nathan Walker 
The first of three backs in the stacked eye. And the pitch, nice job of handling that one a little bit wide on the pitch, but Asher Clark, no trouble one-handing it and picking up about six yards. And once again, great blocking downfield, this time by Kyle Halderman, that enables him to bobble the ball, come up with the catch, and still have some room to run. Take a look at Halderman right there. Doesn't get hurt to the ground, but moves him backwards, and that enables Clark to hold on to the ball and despite the bobble. Play action pass, he looks for Cal. Is that Cal? Touchdown! Well, James, we've been talking about why teams haven't picked on Shaq Bell, the true freshman corner. That's exactly what Air Force is able to do here. Kalf, a big body, about 6 foot 4, 205, 210 pounds, just beats up Bell at the line of scrimmage on a straight go route. And you know what, James, you talk about running the option. Guy's not a bad thrower either. He put that ball right on the money. Did Jefferson. Extra point is good. So you lose the senior, the big Kevin Fogler, to an injury. What do you do? Just replace him with Cal. His first career touchdown. Fingertip grab. It's 21 to nothing. Falcon. Everybody is well aware of Tim Jefferson's running skills coming into this game. We talked about his seven touchdowns, but today throwing the ball three for four, an astonishing 117 yards. I mean, think about that, folks, for just a second. That's nearly 30 yards per attempt. That's just unbelievable. That drive summary brought to you by the most award-winning brand of 4x4s ever, Jeep. Check out the entire lineup at Jeep.com. Jefferson's third 100-yard passing game this season. And here comes Derek Good from the one. Nice hole for Good. Derek Good across the 50 yard line. And finally dropped, but not until he's inside the 30 by Mikel Hunter. The Rams trying to answer back in business. Wedge does a great job, but take a look at the coverage here. Look at all the blue shirts that are in one spot. You're supposed to stay in your lanes, but instead they start to bunch. That enables him to cut to the outside, and there are no blue shirts on the outside. Now, I got to tell you this, young people, just keep going. Don't try and cut back. Just keep going. He would have had an additional 10 yards before he was run down, but in slowing down, instead of being at the 18 or the 17 or 18, they're at the 29. But great effort on the part of good. Rams have to do something here. After the 70-yard kickoff return to the air, they go. Good coverage by the Falcons secondary. And Thomas tucks it and goes for about eight yards. Brady Amack, who was questionable to play in this ball game, runs him down. I was just about to say, because of being questionable, I think that's the reason he got the additional yards. Remember, Pete Thomas isn't making anybody forget Michael Vick. But he gets to the outside, and Amax struggling a little bit to get there, and as a result, it's a seven-yard game. Leggett in motion. Home to the offset back. And the handoff to Woke. Chris Woke. So just as promised, Fairchild said you gotta be hot and you gotta hold on to the football. And he puts in Woke. We've seen Mosier and Mason in the backfield already playing for the injured Raymond Carter, who had an ACL tear his freshman year at UCLA, had a repair, just sprained it this time. Here's the unbalanced line and Woke going behind the big boys up front, and it will be another first down into the infrared zone brought to you by Fleer Extraordinary Vision. Good job by the Rams to do that quick count. Air Force wasn't quite ready, and the big bodies were able to get off quickly, and Woke was able to get that first down. James, I got to tell you, though, I understand that he dropped the ball, but the guy, the guy's rushed for 74 yards, nearly six yards of carry. I'm talking about Leonard Mason now. I'm not giving him another opportunity. But hey, that's not my call. Both teams now over 100 and right at 102 yards rushing. Here's John Mosher. And the stretch play. Results in a pickup of four. Rick Ricketts, the defensive end in this 3-4 scheme. 
Move over there to stop. A part of the frustration, I would think that if you're Colorado State, you look as you pointed out, you know, rushing for over 100 yards here with a little less than seven minutes left in the first half. I'm sure that Steve Fairchild would have taken that, but the turnovers and everything else and the problems that have had defensively, that's the reason they're down three touchdowns. A shutout by TCU last week in Gary Patterson's first road shutout. They need some points in a big way. How about a little razzle-dazzle on the reverse to Lou Greenwood? Touchdown, Rammies! And it's Pete Thomas is the guy that makes the block for him, James. Sometimes we make too big of a fuss over quarterbacks blocking, but Thomas actually brought somebody down to the ground. This is really not altogether that much. It, it doesn't fool people, but Pete Thomas, all six foot five, 250 pounds of him. Watch number four here. It's going to come back here, but watch number four drop people to the ground. Right there, you're going to see it. Bam! He's able to get the edge, and that enables Greenwood to get in for the touchdown. Great block by number four. And extra point is good. Another good snap, snap for Tanner Hedstrom. And the former running back. <laughs> Lou Greenwood. <laughs> hey, hey, coach, I can do lead blocks now. I'll trade with you're giving him, Hey, you're giving, I know he's a tough guy. You're giving him way too much credit. He got cut. He got cut, and both of them went to the ground. Pete Thomas there. Yeah, but you, but you know, how, how many times, how many times, though, have you seen this happen? There it is. <laughs> it was kind of like an accident, but he'll take it. Anthony Wright is going to take some grief in the film room, I bet you, when he says, oh, you got blocked by a quarterback? Well, and you know what's what's funny is usually a, a, a corner can step up, take a quarterback on sure. if he doesn't get cut and go make a play. Anthony Wright's just 5'10". Pete Thomas is 6'5", six, six, five, five, 220. Yeah, exactly. So Wright had no choice but to take him low. He tried to take him low and then come off and make the play. But so many times people make a big fuss on the air of a quarterback making a block, but that's the real deal here as you get a chance to see the drive summary presented by Jeep. And Greenwood with that 13-yard touchdown run. And hopefully for number one here, this is the first of many for CSU Ram fans because they've talked an awful lot about his speed and the things that he can do if he can get his hands on the ball. He certainly did that on that reverse. Here's the line to kick it away. And Warzika will... Backtrack into the end zone and take a knee right there. Falcon ball at the 20. And a little bit of juice for the green and gold right now, but it was all juice thanks to the special teams and seven straight tries. The Navy midshipmen had beaten the Air Force Falcons, but not this time around. Tim Jefferson and the Falcons in those Thunderbird-inspired beauties Celebrate a big win. First win for Troy Calhoun over Navy. Jameel Cooks, who blocked that punt. What's his number? I couldn't quite make it out. Here's the option play, and Asher Clark gets the edge and runs over a couple would-be tacklers. It's 46. Oh, okay. Just checking. <laughs> he, he, he gave you that, that five-foot vertical. He gave you a funny look at that. I never jumped that high in my life. <laughs> How about the entire cadet wing joining the Falcons oh, yeah, on the great. field after the game? Ah, I hear the pads popping. The physicality of that offensive line. Steve Fairchild really impressed with the toughness of the guys up front. And speaking of tough, it wasn't just Cooks who blocked a field goal, blocked a punt. It was Y.Y. Ole and Tim Jefferson, all Mountain West Conference performers, all three Falcons last weekend. Well, you better believe the way Reggie Rembert's playing on defense in this first half, and Tim Jefferson as well. We may see some more boys in blue there with the weekly conference honors. One of the adjustments that Colorado State needs to make, James, is they've been really, really fullback conscious. Two only has 14 yards thus far, but they've been able to get to the outside, especially with Asher Clark. And here comes Asher, high stepping past a couple would be tacklers taking it into Ram territory. And James, with that carry, that pushes him very close. That puts him very close to 100 yards. Number 17 is having a tremendous game for himself. That's 96. 
So Clark will get a breather over there with Troy Calhoun, four yards shy of the century mark. It's Nathan Walker, the fullback. Warzika goes in motion. There's Cody Getz. Replacing Asher Clark, a short pickup. Guy Miller. We go under five. Guy Miller does a nice job of getting penetration there. We, in fact, we've called his name a couple of times, James, number 66. Skelton, of course, number 43. Outside backer who gets his share of playing time as well. Does a nice job going sideline to sideline. Second down and long. Here's the pitch this time. The Getz cuts back inside. Well, my understanding is what Cody wants. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, I, I wanted to resist that, but I couldn't just for that. And now third and short. Great opportunity for him to get some playing time and give Asher Clark a rest, who's now back in the game here. Third and about two football lengths. Walker on the lead block, and Tim Jefferson has enough for another Falcon first down as we have four minutes remaining in this first half. Look for a minute, uh, the timing looks a little bit screwed up. And again, watch, watch what Jefferson does. It's not quite what he would like. And he says, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cut inside. He's tackled to the point of attack. But having said that, he had the momentum and strength at six foot and 205 to move forward and give Air Force a first down. Tackle by the strength of Asher Clark is something that Troy Calhoun has harped on throughout this season. He told us in Vegas at the preseason media days that he has really gained a lot of strength in his legs and has, has become a more powerful runner and also a faster runner. And here he'll try to get to the edge. We'll do just that with the pitch. Run down by Arakbo. The backup linebacker, Mike Arakbo, the freshman out of Houston, Texas. Well, the record for Air Force when they have a 100-yard rusher, which now Asher Clark is, is 19 and 3. And you're right, James, he is. He's a powerful young man, despite the fact that he's only listed at about 185. Nice little breather for Jared, two. Third down, they needed four, and they got about eight. This is a Falcon offense that rushed for 351 yards in their lone loss on the season in Norman, Oklahoma. The most yards ever given up on the ground by a Bob Stoops coached Oklahoma Sooner team. Lost by three, four and one coming into this ball game. The 25th ranked team in the nation. Jefferson and the Falcons trying to move to five and one. An outstanding performance here in the first half so far. Ezra Thompson gives him a pretty good lick there at the end, but again, he had broken through a couple of tackles before Thompson was able to drop him again. Jefferson's just like an additional running back. He's hardly, hardly fragile. Back in the Fleer infrared zone, brought to you by Fleer Extraordinary Vision. It's Getz and Walker. And the eye behind Jefferson. Tim will keep and oh. stop shy of the first down sticks. Boy, if you're Getz right there, you said, oh, come on, come on, pitch it. He had a lot of grass in front of him, but Jefferson didn't want to take any chances. Well, I guess it isn't true then, Todd. Cody, Cody doesn't give it. <laughs> what do you what want? Cody wants, he doesn't necessarily get. Yeah. And Colorado State's going to call a timeout here. Timeout, Colorado State. Their second, their second timeout. Now this is this is a good decision on the part of the coaching staff for Colorado State because going down three touchdowns heading into half, they've got to regroup here a little bit on this third down play and hopefully force a kick. And Steve Fairchild. Certainly the defense has played a little bit better in the second quarter, James, but still there's got to be some frustration over the fact they've given up 287 yards total offense here in the first half to the Falcons. Todd, when Troy Calhoun came to town over three years ago, 
his first hire, Matt McGettigan, the strength and conditioning coach. That's where they get a lot of work done, and he will tell you time and time again that that change in the strength program has been the difference in his guys. They have gone bowling at the end of each of Calhoun's first three seasons. And when it comes down to the third and fourth quarter, a defense that hasn't given up a point in the fourth quarter, an offensive line that just keeps on plugging, as in, is in good a shape as anybody. The fake dive, and then the keep to follow that dive, which turns into a lead blocker of Walker and Tim Jefferson easily with the first down inside the 10-yard line. The misdirection here that Jefferson creates with his ball handling. It looks like it's the fullback, then it looks like the option, and suddenly number seven is able to knife between guard and tackle. That's not necessarily where it's supposed to go, but again, the tremendous vision by number seven. Here's the quick pitch to Halderman, who was already at the end. A big heave-ho from Jefferson and Kyle Halderman. Getting involved in the scoring, and it's 27-7, Falcons. Asher Clark does a great job. You know, he's been running the ball effectively, but watch number 17 here in the block in the end zone that enables Halderman to go in untouched. Drops the defenders to the ground. As a result, the fourth touchdown of the game for the Falcons. Twenty-eight to seven, our score. A fourteen-play drive that goes eighty yards. As we take another look at our Remax out-of-town scores, Utah on the road at Iowa State, an Iowa State team that came from behind to beat Texas Tech last week, and Bobby Houck who will travel with his UNLV Rebels to Fort Collins next week to take on these Rams. A tough one over in West Virginia this afternoon. And of course, San Diego State and BYU. The Aztecs favored, believe it or not, in Provo and trying to drop the BYU Cougars of one and five here in 2010. Calhoun and the Falcons will play the Aztecs next week in a very tough October that started with Navy and a road trip to Wyoming. So again, here comes Derek Good. He had the 70 yard return last time he touched the ball on a kickoff return. That one goes for 29. Coming up on Ram Halftime Live, we'll take it back to the studio where you can join Marius Payton, Ted Sunquist, and Kelly Stauffer as they break down the first half and take a look around the rest of the Mountain West Conference. Now, here's a situation, James, where certainly. They wish they had that challenge back because now they're going to go into their two-minute offense, but they're missing a timeout because of that challenge earlier in the half. Rayman rush thrown too high to Liggett and almost another interception in and out of the hands of Reggie Rembert. This one might have been a little bit easier on the tip drill than his first pick of the day. Second and There's your Jeep drive summary. 14 plays, eight up. Five minutes and 19 seconds. 107 left to play in the first half. Again, Thomas back to pass. Good break on the ball to keep the receiver in front. And as the pass is caught by Matt Yem, Reggie Rembert, speaking of San Diego State, Todd, Reggie Rembert was the difference in that game. He had an interception return for a touchdown, a fumble recovery, a sack last year in the win over San Diego State. And here's an extra effort by Woke. Chris Woke will move the chains. And as we go under 40 seconds, we sit right at 40 as they reset those chains. And quick hit and out of bounds for Marquise Law. But the Aztecs last year came in. It was San Diego State that didn't give up a touchdown 
to this Falcon offense. A game that was decided by turnovers given up for the Aztecs. So trying to put some more points on the board, Pete Thomas and these Rams as Falcons show blitz, and they do just that. Picked up nicely, though, but good coverage down the field. Thomas must tuck it and run out of bounds. That was heads up on the part of Thomas to have that player with all. You're right, they do a great job of, of blitz pickup. But again, in man coverage, Air Force is able to get all the white shirts covered, and Thomas able to get out of bounds and preserve the timeouts they have remaining. And the late pressure forces Thomas to throw it at the feet of Chris Woke, so it will be a fourth down and four. Brings up fourth down. For the Rams, 22 seconds remaining here in the first half. Interesting on the sideline, James, they debated it for just a little bit about the possibility of going for it, and Steve Fairchild decided otherwise, and I'm guessing that Air Force, with the ball near midfield here, will be in a safe situation. Hedstrom with the snap, Kondodiakis. Another sky-high punt. And again, you've got what Derek Good was down there first, and while it was angled out of bounds, special teams discipline. Derek Good's the first one down there. He's got to go to the goal line and, and turn his back and find that ball and try to keep it out of the end zone. That's exactly right. They did a poor job, but they were unable to find that ball as we see Good limping around a little bit. Hopefully it's nothing serious. And there's, there's the gentleman that you just mentioned earlier, James. That's Ryan Gardner limping off the field. And Jefferson and the Falcons will take a 28-7 halftime lead into the locker room. And Steve Fairchild's Rams without any points against TCU. Last week, the number three defense in the land gets seven in the first half. Troy Calhoun's with Natalie. Coach, except for that turnover, perfect football, mistake free for the Falcons. Uh, we, we had, you know, our kickoff cover's got to be a little better. We need to hit the ball deeper on that and uh, and then to not be able to convert when we got the ball inside the five yard line. Like, it's inexcusable. I mean, if we're going to play well at the Air Force Academy, we want to have a good football team. Those are things we have to do. CSU expected you to pound the rock. You went flying through the air uh, from the get go, though. You've been doing it well on both sides. Yeah, we had a couple big plays to Zach Kalth, which I think helps, especially on the perimeter. We've got to play better in the second half. Our backs, our backs can run harder than we have in the first half. All right, Coach, up 21. Well, Natalie, you'd think it's seven for the Falcons, 28 for the Rams, but that's not the case. Number 25 team in the nation, up 28 to seven. Going to take it back up I-25 for Ram Halftime Live. Guys, it's all yours. College Football on the Mountain is brought to you by Remax. The sign you want, the agent you need. By Steel, to find the full line of dependable steel outdoor power equipment, see your local servicing steel dealer or visit steeldealers.com. By Lockheed Martin, we never forget who we're working for. And by Brakes Plus, a whole lot more. The Aspen's starting to turn, and, well, the tide isn't turning when you look at the Air Force Falcons. They just keep on churning as we welcome you back. Number 25 in the nation and up 28-7. to 7. Todd Christensen, James Bates, and how about the Rams, though? If you would have told them this week heading into this ball game that they would have over 100 yards rushing and winning the time of possession battle at halftime, they'd be pretty happy. Yeah, they would. Of course, the problem is, is that they turn the ball over, and, of course, three of those drives that Air Force had for scores all together added up to about six minutes, you know, because they were so dominant early on. So Colorado State has some work to do here in the second half. Well, let's take a look back at our Ram keys to the game. Brought to you by Ram award-winning Ram trucks, plus a new heavy duty, make it one of the most powerful lineups in Ram history. Well, as you pointed out, the run to daylight, there has been some daylight, 125 yards. They've been effective with regards to that. Third down and out, not so much so. Air Force has converted five of six on the third down conversions. Just the opposite in terms of the wasting time, as you pointed out, Colorado State had nearly five more minutes in time of possession, but it hasn't helped. And of course, Thomas has struggled here, nine for 17 with an interception and a mere 56 yards. 
Let's get it down to Natalie, who caught up with Steve Fairchild on his way out of the locker room. I did, but prior to that, James, I'm going to remind you about Ryan Gardner, the D lineman that you saw limping off going into the half. I spoke to some of the training staff, and he's still being worked at, worked on at this time. They say it's a sprain of some sort, but they're being pretty vague about that. I spoke with Steve Fairchild. First question about that. Uh, uh, about that um, uh, first quarter drive, and he went forward on the fourth down. He said, bad call on my part looking back on it. He was not happy with himself. Expect more trickery, Coach? Absolutely. He said, if I don't, Natalie, remind me, because I need to bring some in to get some points. And he said uh, about adjustments to look out for coming the second half. He said, my quarterback is clued in now. That cover two on third down, he, he knows to look out for it now. All right, and the second half is underway, and Derek Good, who had a 70-yard return in the first half, left limping in the first half, looks to be okay as he rips it up through the Falcon return, uh, cover man to the 30-yard line. How about our great clips of the game? Greatclips.com or call 1-800-GREAT-CLIPS for a salon near you. Great Clips, relax, you're at Great Clips. There's the 70 yard run by Good. Pete Thomas had one batted down on fourth down. That one intercepted by Reggie Rembert. And the lone scorer of the day for the Rams, the wheels of Lou Greenwood on the reverse. As we start the second half here at the United States Air Force Academy, and just as Troy Calhoun mentioned to Natalie Vickers on his way to the locker room, we can't make mistakes. We've got to do what we do to, to win football games. The same goes with Colorado State. Colorado State isn't a great football team. It's not that team, oh, woe is me, we're undersized, we're not as fast, nobody recruited us. But right now, they are not winning football games and they have to hold on to balls like that if they want to be in a football game against a good football team like the Falcons. So a second down and 10 now. And there's the draw play. And it's Chris Woke, Leonard Mason. Really a nice first half until he put the ball on the turf and turned it over to Reggie Rembert. And a nice tackle there by John Davis, the safety. Got his number, number six. But in the open field, that's one of the things you don't want to do in the case of Woke is he jumps up in the air and he makes it easy for Davis when he has no, he has no foundation. Davis drops him on the spot. And as a result now, third and six coming up. Showing blitz, but backing out. The screen set up, and how about the play? Anthony Wright from his corner position read it all the way and shuts down what would have been a big play for the Rams. That was the play that was so effective there in the first half. Woke was unable to do it, and Wright does a great job of penetrating. Only three rushers, and that means you got an awful lot of eyes in the backfield. And Thomas doesn't know that. He just flips the ball out to Woke. And the result is a big play by Wright. And another big play on top of that. A punt block. In back-to-back -back weeks, it won him the game against Navy. And here it sets him up in an outstanding field position. And James, that's Anthony Wooding Jr., the defensive back, who comes in and gets a piece of it. But you know what? It looked like a jailbreak there. There were so many blue shirts. Take a look for yourself. Look at all the blue shirts that are going to come in here. And Gooding's just right on top here. He's able to get, look at that. I mean, he actually, he actually goes to the side there and gets the left part of his leg. He was lucky to get a piece of it because it looked like it was roughing. He was so far inside. So taking over first drive of the second half in Ram territory. First play from scrimmage results in a first down. I wanted to ask you this before. Is that the Blue Men group? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, Asher Clark continues his tremendous average per carry. Well over 100 yards now is number 17, having himself a terrific day. 2 Halderman and Clark. The back stack behind Jefferson. The give is to Jared, too, for a short gain. And 
that fumble that he put on the turf in the first half, the senior from Park City, Utah, was the first play of the year for him that had gone for negative yardage. Clark, it's interesting, you know, he still has the ability to block, but it's fascinating to me as to how from week to week, who has a big day? Could be Jefferson, could be two, could be Clark, could be Haldeman, could be Warzika. They do a great job of spreading things around. There's the speed option and run down from behind. Roderick Sargent is the guy who's in pursuit. The smallest defensive end at 228 pounds has two sacks coming into this season, and they really like his play. But again, he's indicative of how things have changed defensively in college football. Ah, lightning doesn't strike twice, but it strikes thrice. There you see two Jefferson and Clark, two juniors, flanking Jared Two, the senior back there. Pressure was on and able to get rid of it as he was popped. Tim Jefferson, but thrown a little bit too high, intended for Zach Kalth, who caught his first career touchdown in the first half. Now fourth down at about nine, we're looking at about a 43. Forty-four yard field goal. It'll be forty-three. As Tim Jefferson not happy with himself, wanted that one back. Colton Reed to snap. The hold by Cochran and a fake. And all alone. 25 yards out, and the Falcons just keep coming here on special teams. It's Jazz Demerick, the tight end, slips out for a fake field goal touchdown. Natalie Vickers asked Steve Fairchild if he had some more tricks up his sleeve. Coming out of the halftime locker room, he said, of course I do, remind me if I don't use them. But somebody forgot to warn the Colorado State defense that two can play at that game. Lined up for the field goal, they fake it, and it's just too easy. Here's Soderbergh's extra point try, it's good. And it's a 35 to seven ball game. But as you point out, James, Demrith was just wide, wide open on that fake field goal. An absolute gift for the Falcons. Up four touchdowns now. Section 8, loving the special teams here at the Air Force Academy. Here's your drive summary presented by Jeep. Most award-winning brand of 4x4s ever. Check out the entire lineup at jeep.com. And it ends on a fake field goal. Cochran, the senior, his first career touchdown pass. A third string quarterback to Chaz Demereth. And the 25 yard strike. And that was after the block punt by Woody. Let's see if the kick cover team can follow up with great special teams play. This has been a little bit of an adventure this year. Thanks in large part to this guy today. And better coverage as they corral Derek Good. Well, we talk about we talked about the special teams as you pointed out, and, and uh, Wooding does a great job of getting inside and getting a piece of the ball. Now watch now watch the fake here as Cochran rolls out. Demerth is just wide, wide open there for the gimme touchdown for the Falcons. You know, sometimes, James, you're just so excited to block a kick and just sell out. Here's Leonard Mason again. Mason, who had 13 carries for 74 yards in the first half. A nice gain on first down. Alex Means getting an opportunity to play a little bit here. Mason had a hamstring injury in August and missed most of fall camp. He's playing his way back into game shape. He'll stay in and block right here. Slips out late and trying to thread the needle again and lucky that that one wasn't picked off by Brady Amack. That time intended for Pipes. Well, as you pointed out, Amac is having some problems with health, but it is a great job there, breaking on the ball, getting in front of number 11 and batting it away. Thomas runs to the sidelines there quickly to make sure that he has the right play call. 
They get the lone receiver in motion. Two tights, eye backs, and a play action pass. It'll be a first down as Thomas connects with Tyson Liggett. The senior will move the chains for the Rams. And the fact that it was third and short gave some resonance to that play action fake. Air Force had to respect that, and as a result, Liggett was able to get in between the linebackers for a first down for the Rams at the 44. Tyson's father, a baseball player at TCU. One Frogs beating these Rams last week in Fort Collins. Here's Leonard Mason, stretches it and gets the edge, makes the guy miss, and it's a first down as Leonard Mason goes across the 45-yard line. It's a nice block up field there by Jake Godowski, who comes out. What, what you're going to see, Godowski is able to get to the outside. You're going to see number 58, and it's a nice block downfield by Greenwood as well. Godowski leads the way. And Greenwood able to follow him for some additional yards. Excuse me, Mason. Split backs next to the gun, the freshman Pete Thomas. First down and 10 Rams. Four-man rush, and they get to him. Just when something starts going the way of the green and gold, it backfires via a penalty or a big play by this Falcon defense. Natalie Vickers, what's going on down there? I we'll have an update on Ryan Gardner, uh, the junior D lineman. You know, he hobbled off, off the field going into the half, and he was being worked on during the half. Well, it comes back that he has a growing strain. So he is just uh, going to be taken out for the rest of, rest of the game for precautionary reasons. I have a problem saying growing. If you guys can help me, help me with that. Growing. There we go. Bradley Connor is back up, Natalie. The Falcon in on the sack, that last play, the first sack of the day. There's a look at Bradley, the senior from Fayetteville, Georgia. A lot of Georgia guys on this Falcon squad. Clay Hendricks, the offensive coordinator. And Charlton Warren recruit the Georgia and southeastern area of the United States. Chad Hall was a Georgian. Remember their great runner? Chad Hall may be playing in the NFL tomorrow. More on that later. Here's a third and 15. They set up the screen to motion. Uh -uh. Bradley Connor was over there along with Austin Nicholas. And a great job by the defense to read that screen. And so here's a fourth down and 13 in the punting unit. Kondodiakis comes out, and he's had a couple balls downable inside the 20. They haven't been able to do it here today. It was a safe team on for the Falcons as they were expecting fate. And a fair catch called for and taken by Reggie Rembert just inside the 10. 35 to 7. The Falcons all over the Rams with 8.15 left to go in the third quarter. The old T-38 Thunderbird in the foreground. And in the background, Pikes Peak. The United States Air Force Academy here in Colorado Springs. And 60 degrees and clear. A beautiful afternoon. Glad you're with us, along with Natalie Vickers and Todd Christensen. I'm James Bates. The Colorado State Rams looking for win number two on this season. And the Air Force Falcon. The 25th ranked team in the nation. And ranked in the top 25 for the first time since 2003, these Falcons. And there's Michael Sissy. And a hurry up now for Jefferson and the Falcons. And the quick pitch to Asher Clark, who is averaging 7.6 yards a carry today. And Sisson and the Rams do a good job of running him down, but it is a third down and short for the Falcons. Talk about your contrast. Look at those numbers there, Todd. Well, certainly Colorado State's going to move up as a result of what they've been able to do today, rushing for nearly 140 yards. But yeah, first and 120 if you can't get more of a stretch than that in college football. And the Rams find a way to come up with a stop here. Handoff is to two, and that's not going to happen. You hear the 
not boos, but twos roar through Falcon Stadium for Jared Two, the senior from Park City, Utah. Thanks for explaining that to me. You're welcome. I just wanted you to make sure that they don't dislike Jared Two. He's done a lot for this program. <laughs> I wasn't explaining it to you. I was oh, explaining I it were. to all of our 10-year-old listeners. Gotcha. <laughs> Pretty much the same mentality. <laughs> There's the boot. And it's intercepted. A big pop, and it's into the hands of Ivory Hurd. Tim Jefferson fired one in there. And a great break on the ball, and it popped right into the hands of the junior Hurd. Well, Chaz Demereth looks like he has this ball, but then he himself gets separated. That, that's, a, that, that's a pretty good lick there by Ricky Brewer, who separates him from the ball, and the ball pops up, and Hurd is able to procure that gratuity, a turnover for Colorado State now, set up in very good field position. The Falcon 30. Leonard Mason. Getting closer, and it looks like with that five-yard pickup, he'll be right at 100 yards this afternoon. He almost had 100 last year in Fort Collins in the loss to these Falcons. And he goes over the century mark there, Leonard Mason, the senior from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Trying to do something with that turnover and interception. The big hit by Brewer, and the pick by Ivory Hurd. Here's the draw to Mason. Splits the defense, lowers his head, and up to the 15-yard line. Talking about hats around the ball. Now, 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 this is interesting right here. We know for a fact, we know for a fact that it's illegal to get help in terms of when you're running by your offensive line. But <laughs> tell me this isn't your offensive line helping right here. Held up at the five-yard line, all those bodies pushing forward. Have you ever seen that called? Ever. Not Did unless it's down on the goal it? line. Not unless it's down on the goal line every now and then you'll see it called. Okay. And here's the sweep to Mason. Full head of steam heading downhill on first and goal. He gets about six yards. Yeah, one of the things that you gotta one of the things that you have to like. If you're the offensive coaches of Colorado State, depending upon how long Carter's going to be out, you just got to like how Mason goes north and south. That just makes a big difference. You saw Hennessy wrap his arms around him at about the seven, and he's still able to move forward to the four. Back in the Fleer infrared zone, brought to you by Fleer Extraordinary Vision. From the four, Mason, 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 touchdown! They kept feeding number two. He goes over 100 yards and punches it into the paint for the Rams for the second time today, this offense into the end zone. Well, Capriolo and Starr once again do a great job on the outside, getting those blue shirts out of the way. Good job by that O-line for Colorado State, especially on that right side. giving up six, but not seven. Another special teams big play by the Falcons, so it'll stay right there at 35 to 13. Is that Jamil yes. Cooks? It is. It is. <laughs> There's that Burt. Another block. Leonard Mason having a terrific day here. 19 carries for 125 yards in that touchdown that we just saw. Follow behind his friends there in Star and Gadowski. Four care. You can see the drive summary presented by Jeep. A minute and 48, 30 yards courtesy of the interception by Ivory Herb. Warzika. From the end zone. Jonathan Warzik, a little bit of space and a little bit of a move on the line. One man to beat, and he does it.
The second career kickoff return for a touchdown. The junior, Jonathan Warzika, answering the Ram touchdown on the last drive. Well, Jonathan Warzika does a great job making a yep. cut, but as you pointed out, James, he puts a move on the kicker. The kicker is never, never supposed to give up the outside. Warzika comes and the wedge goes to the right. Now watch, he cuts in between. The line's going to come over and he's going to give up the outside. And that's where Warzika is able to cut back, get to the outside, flash his speed and go the distance. Take a look at the wedge right here. Watch him come instead of to the middle, to the left, and that enables Warzika to cut up. Now watch the kicker right here. He's got to just run at him. He's got to take a shot at him. He can't buy into that fake. As a result of buying into the fake, Warzika is able to go the distance. Just an absolutely miserable day for the special teams of Colorado State, as we see here. Jameel Cooks getting up with a serious vertical and batting down the extra point. So the Rams have now given up on special teams, a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And of course, the blocked extra point. And Jameel Cooks, the special teams player of the week in the Mountain West Conference for his big plays against Navy last week. More on the Cooks family. Here's Natalie Vickers. That's right, guys. Jameel Cooks, freshman cadet. OK, really tough life. How about his father, retired senior master sergeant in the Army? I was reading about him. He said, it's nothing being a freshman cadet compared to life at home with dad. And I'm sure dad is pretty happy of his freshman today. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> Go to the Air Force for a break? It's less rigid here. It's less rigid. <laughs> here comes Derek Good, who had a 70-yard kickoff return of his own earlier, stumbling. But for a lot of yards. And Derek Good, who set up the first touchdown for the Rams with an outstanding return, finally brought down by Mikel Hunter, the speedster wide receiver, a new Remax first and 10 line. Put up there just across midfield, brought to you by Remax, the sign you want, the agent you need. That one went for 34 yards. Here comes Pete Thomas and the Rams. Tried to get a screen to Greenwood in a heads-up play. I'll tell you what, Anthony Wright, Reggie Rembert, Jonathan Davis, Brian Lindsay today as well. You talk about smart football players. Had that ball been thrown, Anthony Wright picks it off and scores a touchdown. Pete Thomas doing a good job of just tucking it and getting a couple yards. I think they've got Eric Pites, the tight end, with a block on the back that they're discussing. Oh, chop ball. Illegal crackback block. Number 23 of the offense, 15 yard penalty. First down. Tyson Liggett. Yeah, isn't that rich? All these Falcons do block below the waist, block legally, legally, but then finally it's Colorado State that gets called for one. Well, that must have been, it must have been behind the line of scrimmage because they're... Wow. A first down and 25 now for the Rams. And a whole lot of dancing to gain one yard. And as Anthony Wright's back there in a hurry, as Chris Woke that time had the ball. Cheers have come from that side of the field. Woke remains in. It's three wides. And the play action pass for Thomas. Great coverage by Davis. And right. And again, Thomas must tuck it and get as many yards as he can on the ground. 
all day long. We've had an interception by Reggie Rembert. Almost two picks by number eight. Some big time pops in. Something that doesn't show up on the stat sheet, the coverage so many times in the secondary. That's an excellent point because Air Force traditionally in the past has been almost exclusively zone coverage, but they have enough confidence in Wright and Rembert. But they don't mind putting them on an island periodically, and they've certainly come through when that opportunity has presented itself. Setting up the slip screen to the fullback, Hunga. And they got a Falcon Hennessy Thomas down on pass. the ground with a cut, but Brady Amack finally Hunga. recovering and bringing down the big fullback. So a fourth down and short now coming up. And Pete Thomas and the Rams, no choice but to go for it, trailing 42 to 13. That was a nice catch by Paolo to get that one just barely off the ground. Four yards to go here. And Air Force is the one that calls timeout. Well, we've got a chance. How about our Domino's delivery of the game? Second touchdown of the day. Jefferson to Cal, first of the career. And Zach Cow, the delivery of the game brought to you by Domino's, who wants everyone to try their inspired pizzas. Get two medium, two topping pizzas for just $5.99 each. And feeling it today. The Falcons on the field and up in the stands, thanks to the junior quarterback, Tim Jefferson. Only six attempts, three completions. And the touchdown. Pass to Zach Kalf, his first career TD. It's, it's guys like Kalf, it's guys like Demereth who are filling in for Fogler, the featured receiver, when there is one in this ground and pound offense. And doing an outstanding job. And here's your fourth down. Pete Thomas tries to rifle it in there, but it's broken up by guess who? Reggie. Remember, one more time, an 0 for 2 on fourth down, this Ram offense today. Well, that play's getting a little bit predictable in terms of Liggett coming down and settling down. In this case, rembert has got him man for man. He's able to separate him from the ball. He's going to sit, going to try and sit down in the zone right here. And, th and there you can see it right here. But again, the closing speed and the quickness is able to separate him from the ball, and the result is a... Giving the ball over on downs to the Falcons. An outstanding timing by Rembert, too, not to be too early and to draw the flag. Great blocks for Asher Clark, who's finally stood up by Elijah Blue Smith, but not until he gets nine yards on the carry. Once again, a great job by Jefferson setting that up. He had to pitch quickly because he has somebody in his face. He does a great job with the vision, seeing what's coming at him. Play action pass and up top for Halderman. He can't haul that one in. And I don't know that I'd be showing off trailing 42 to 13, Ivory Heard, but nice defensive play. Yeah, it was a nice play, and you're right. That's a little bit much when you're down by 29 points. Nevertheless, Heard with the interception earlier does a nice job of stripping the ball from Halderman. He tried to get it at its highest arc, but they're able to get over there and break it up. Third and short, two, lined up behind Jefferson. And there you have it. Every time Jared Two gets the ball, he seems to fall forward for about five or six. And the chains will move. Well, the last time these Falcons were in the top 25, you had to go way back to 2003. Chance Harridge was the quarterback. And it only lasted for one week because the following week, they would travel to Navy and lose. And actually, the last three times the Falcons have been in the top 25, they've lost quickly. Speaking of quickly, to the ground, here comes Cody Getz. And he gets a first down. Once again, great blocking downfield where Zeke is able to shield his man off. 
Look at the mis the misdirection. There's Warzika. Boy, that's a, that's a big gap right there that he's able to take advantage of. And of course, downfield also is Chaz Demrith getting a block. The fake to get. And oh, 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 Tim Jefferson hooking up with Cal for the second time today, throwing it across his body and lacing it in there. What an amazing throw for 19 yards in the touchdown. You know, if you're D'Angelo Wilkinson, you had to think to yourself, I thought I had a pick. Watch this go through the hands of number two. Look at that, he goes up, doesn't quite get high enough. That's tremendous concentration on the part of Cal as the ball goes through the fingers of Wilkinson, he's able to concentrate on the ball and come up with it. Extra point is good. And the Falcons just keep pouring it on. Zach Kalf had career touchdown number one in the first half, and why not make it two here in the second? Todd, you know how tough it is for a quarterback to roll left and throw. Never a plant foot, but still he drills it in there. And the concentration for a receiver after it goes through the hands of D'Angelo Wilkinson, exceptional as well. Well, once again, the numbers, the numbers start to pile up for Jefferson in terms of throwing the football today. He has four completions, but of those four completions, 136 yards and two touchdowns. Now, why is it when a guy scores a touchdown or throws one or does a good play, he comes to the sidelines and he's on the phone? Can you explain that to me? That happens so many times whenever I'm watching football. I, I would understand it more if it's a fumble or you threw an interception that you'd have that conversation, but you just, you know, you just threw that rifle for a touchdown. What, what's the conversation? <laughs> Reinforcement. Oh, is that it? Okay. I, I, I'm curious. It, it feels kind of weird to see a phone with a cord on it. It's been a while since Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Kids, when we were your age. Look, look close. Is, it, is, that, is that a rotary? <laughs> <laughs> Again, they cook it in the direct direction of Good. Here comes Derek Good. And Derek Good has played hard. Returning kicks. So, 49. You know, this this is the Air Force Academy after oh, all, but that doesn't mean you can do half push-ups. Wait a minute. Come on. That's bogus, man. Those don't count. Look, no. at you could, you could put three fists underneath that chest. The other guy was over there laughing at him. Yeah, that's oh. not good. Email that guy. <laughs> James Bates wants him to have a demerit. <laughs> I actually one of the uh, had to do just this now. Here's Pete Thomas. 52 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And he hooks up with Woke. I uh, one of the kids on, on my daughter's swim team. I uh, I bet him 50 push-ups on the Florida Alabama game. And needless to say, I had to do 50 push-ups the other day. So full extension. Uh, and I did work, work with those Ooh. cadets on. <laughs> how, many, how many sets did it take you to get 50? I did them all. Oh, okay. Just check it. <laughs> I told you when I was in high school, I tried out for that American Gladiators that you used to host, and you had to do 50 fingertip push-ups. I didn't get past that stage. Here's second down and long, and it's the jailbreak screen for Lou Greenwood. Greenwood up near the first down sticks will be stopped just shy, though. About a yard shy is that will do it for three quarters of play. The last three times the Falcons were in the top 25, it was one and done. And not this time around, my brother. 49 to 13 as we head into the fourth. And the Falcons haven't given up a point in the fourth quarter all year. And welcome back as we get set to start the fourth quarter here in Colorado Springs, 49 to 13. The Falcons on top. Here's your Brakes Plus drive of the game. Brought to you by Brakes Plus. A whole lot more. It's the final drive of the first half. And that well-oiled machine that is the Air Force Falcon option game worked to perfection. Capped off with a touchdown run. The pitch from Jefferson to the senior Kyle Halderman. 
And the Falcons, offensively, defensively, and special teams as well, getting it done here today. Connor Deeds, the backup quarterback. You see him getting loose over there on the sidelines. And there is a flag Mason down, even Don't though flag. Leonard Mason seems to have the first down pickup. Yeah, I think that's an offsize that they'll let go. And of course, if you're Leonard Mason, you say, yeah, let it go, because I got five, six mm -hmm. yards on that. I want to keep it. Not that he would go over and say that. I'm just saying that's, that's on his mind. Offside, number 90 of the defense. His penalty is declined. Nice. First down, CSU. Rams dropped their Mountain West Conference opener at home last week in a 27 to nothing loss to the TCU Horn Frogs, the number five team in the nation in both polls. And trying to get a little something going here in the fourth quarter before they head back home and take on the UNLV Rebels at home next week in the Choice City. You know, James, you and I, it's axiomatic because we've been around football most of our lives, if not all of our lives is that you win and lose as a team. But as I look at that offensive line, I'm so impressed by how they've played today for Colorado State. They've done a decent job protecting Thomas. Obviously, they've been running the ball effectively. Well, and uh, certainly, Steve a, Fairchild, certainly a bright spot. Well, Steve Fairchild said it was a bright spot last week. Here's Leonard Mason, who's got three Falcons in his face in a hurry. It's Reggie Rembert, who unofficially we've got him at nine stops to go along with his fumble recovery. Two pass breakups and an interception today. Right here, uh, what defensive else is, player yeah, of the week. What else has he done? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what he's done. He led, he was the commander of 130 freshmen That's this impressive. past summer. Yeah. And Very sitting down impressive. with him in, in preseason meetings, you can see that you would want him leading any group that you've got here at the Air Force Academy. An incredible young man, one of many here in Colorado Springs. So it is a first down for Colorado State. That's good news, but it's not all good news, is it, Natalie? Well, it's not for Colorado State. Uh, James, you can put away that iPad thing that you touch, and, and Todd, you can put away your pen because the Air Force Falcons have been perfect, not allowing one point on the board in the fourth quarter all this season long. So not a lot of hope for CSU, and it could be attributed to the times of the practices. Coach Calhoun, we're talking to him this week, when he came on board, two and a half hour practices were the norm. On Thursday, he had a 54 minute practice and less on Friday. He just wanted to get his kids some rest, and he, remember he said, they are really smart kids, they can deal with that. Yes, Coach Calhoun says, we piggyback on what they bring from the hill. The hill, of course, where all these cadets take their classes, and when they come down to the field house and come down to practice, the discipline, the drive, the hard work is already there. So they don't have to pound that into them as football players. But having said that, and you're the son of a football coach, it's very rare when you get a football coach to concede that less is more. Here's another reverse. Greenwood scored on it earlier. This will be a big pickup. And inside the infrared red zone, extraordinary vision by Greenwood and by Fleer. Well, that's very impressive, that fourth quarter defense throughout the season. And of course, the big deal is right here. <laughs> that Natalie pointed out, Goose Egg City, nil, nada, yet. Or, or, or nothing, if you prefer. Not a... You do? There's Mosher, Ponga, with the big lead block. 36, clearing the way for John Mosher. And a little bit slow there, Brian Lindsay. Well, this is what happens when you're not getting many carries. John Mosier gets to the outside, James. Am I going to run out of bounds? I don't think so. Bam! Puts a, puts a big lick on Brian Lindsay, and Lindsay took the worst of that, obviously. The way he's holding that shoulder, probably a stinger, and he couldn't make it over to the sidelines. Your neck 
become so vulnerable when you when you stretch that head out to put it on somebody and Lindsay who's had a big day just a sophomore playing alongside John Davis at the safety spot. But, I, but I'm thinking, James, that if that's Mason, you know, who's had 20 carries, you know, maybe you slide out of bounds, and that was only the third carry for Mosher. So he says, heck no, I got plenty of juice. Forty-nine to thirteen, our score. Thomas and the Rams trying to put some more points up. Play action, pass, and left all alone. Pites the tight end in the back of the end zone. I can tell you, first points. How about the how about the timing of our graphic, huh, James? Showing all those zeros. Because of the effectiveness of the running game, the play action works. They get sucked up, and Pites is able to get behind the backers. That's a very nice touch on the part of Pete Thomas. One of the things that Steve Fairchild emphasized to us, James, is the fact that that's something that he does well. He doesn't have to be taught. You know, the, the velocity of balls down the field versus the ones that are soft. And he does a great job right there, laying it into Pites for the touchdown here in the fourth quarter. Now, a round of applause for Ben Kapaka, a special teams player helped over to the sidelines. 49 to 20 as we welcome you back and take a look at today's air stats brought to you by Lockheed Martin. We never forget who we're working for. And Air Force only five completions on the day and Tim Jefferson throwing only eight passes. And one of those from Cochran, the third string quarterback on a fake field goal going for a touchdown. And James primarily now for Air Force, they have their second unit in. As you mentioned, they had Dietz, but quick look at the offensive line and some of the backs. Giving some reserves, some much needed playing time. And now as I say that, Jefferson comes back in the game. So Walker, a Colorado Springs guy like Jamil Cooks, who has made so many plays the last couple weeks, looks just a freshman. Cooks was one of many great you hear of all the, the great quarterbacks in high school that come to the academy and get switched around and where they play when they hit the field. What you don't know about is, is all the great hoops players. A lot of great basketballers in high school. Like Anthony Wright, Jameel Cooks playing. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 75 of the offense. Five yard penalty, third down. Now speaking of Jameel Cooks, leading that special teams charge. <laughs> How about that one block punt, blocked extra point, the touchdown that the Rams gave up on the fake field goal, nobody around for Cochran's pass. And of course the 100 yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Warzika. And there's Jameel Cooks, your Mountain West Conference special teams player of the week coming out of that Navy win. And to the air goes Jefferson. And there's Halderman, Kyle Halderman, wiggling around and up near midfield. Nice throw by Jefferson and getting Halderman the ball in space. I wanted to ask you, did you tell me that, that your guy, Urban Meyer, he coaches special teams, does he not? He does, he does. I, I asked that because I know that Frank Beamer, of course, the head coach for Virginia Tech, also coaches special teams. And I think there are a couple of head coaches that are doing that now. But it seems like maybe it's just the games that you and I have been a part of. The special teams have been a big issue this year. We've seen more block punts and kicks returned for touchdowns and some strange things. Well, and, and if you talk to Troy Calhoun heading up to this game and even going into the halftime locker room, the chink in the armor that is this Air Force Falcon number 25 team in the nation has been special yeah. teams. 
So you're absolutely right. And in New Mexico, the block punts uh, against them, the punt returns for touchdowns. And you know, you, like, like you're saying, Beamer and, and Urban Meyer, and it shows how important and how much these coaches realize, but it's still been pretty sloppy. It has. First half of the season anyway. Jefferson still in and gets with the carry, stopped after a one yard gain. Cody gets another Georgia boy from Buford, Georgia, 5'7, 170 pound sophomore to back up Asher Clark, who's also from Georgia, Lawrenceville's Peachtree Ridge High School. Tim Jefferson is. A Georgian, too. Woodward Academy graduate. So we saw on special teams a Falcon go down on the kickoff return. And it, it's important to stay healthy coming out of this game. And Tim Jefferson still in there. And with more on the injuries, here's Natalie Vickers one more time. Thanks, guys. Yes, yeah, important to stay healthy uh, during this month, especially Ben Kopaka. We found out that he has a sprained right knee. He's on the uh, table over there still being looked at. They're moving it around, and it happened when he planted his foot. Brian Lindsay, you didn't see him walk off, but he did. It was... Uh, he, he walked into the locker room just before that Kopaka... Um, uh, break there and he has a left shoulder sprain so they are both not going to be coming back for the game and you know this is uh, what coach said this week is the toughest month of Air Force Falcon football ever coming up so so important with uh, that game against SDSU TCU Utah of course they just came off Navy and guess what's the beginning of next month Army and Natalie to end September guess where they were Wyoming, up in Laramie in a very tough one. 20 to 14 win against the Pokes. Austin Carter Samuels hurt in the win at Toledo. So won't start today in Cowtown. Actually won't play for Dave Christensen's bunch. Um, third down, they go the wrong way. Trying to get up to that Remax first and 10 line. Remember, Remax, the sign you want, the agent you need. Good penetration on the part of CJ James, the defensive end. And and don't forget, folks, even though the Jefferson's staying in the game, he could still be punting. But they changed their mind, and they'll go with their regular punter, Keo Bartholomew. Under seven minutes to play. The block was on, but Bartholomew able to get it off. And it's brought in by Tyson. Liggett inside the 10 yard line, 49 to 20, 648 left to play. College football on the mountain is brought to you by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge, grab life by Jeep, the most award winning brand of 4x4s ever. Check out the entire lineup at Jeep.com. And by Lockheed Martin, we never forget who we're working for. Well, the helmet on your right, a lot more important than the one on the left. The one on the left playing some good football, and the one on the left has a mouthpiece and an oxygen tube. There on the right, the Air Force fighter pilot helmet, and here's a first down for Colorado State. And, well, good in there again. Good had a 70-yard kickoff return earlier in the ball game, and looked to be holding his hamstring there in the first half, but seems to be just fine. Glad to have you with us this afternoon here in Colorado Springs as the clouds roll in. Along with Todd Christensen and Natalie Vickers, I'm James Bates. Got BYU and San Diego State coming up later today on the mountain. Should be a very interesting matchup. Bronco Mendenhall's guys trying to turn this thing around. One and four right now in Brady Hoax. San Diego State Aztecs. Oh, that's got to be frustrating because you know what? Good's having a terrific day. You know, he's auditioning for some playing time right here, James. Hopefully he can get back on the field. Here's Woke. 
low pad level as he goes forward for a first down. It's just over five minutes, 45 seconds left to play in this ball game. Number of reserves on the field now for the Air Force defense. as they swung it out, try to get another reserve involved. That's number 37, Jake Levin, who drops it. Well, Colorado State doing some damage on the ground without Raymond Carter. They're starting tailback sideline for a couple weeks with the knee sprain, but unable to stop the Air Force Falcon high-powered offense. And too many turnovers and special teams blunders to stay in this one. Pete Thomas again, good timing route, is hitting his receiver there in the window. And that's Yim, Matt Yim, the junior from Fort Collins with the reception. Yeah, those numbers can get to be deceptive there at the end when you start to add those up. 266 yards rushing. Absolutely, Steve Fairchild would have taken that coming into this game. And look at that, even in first downs. You know, a lot of people get credit for it. It's either Benjamin Disraeli or Mark Twain who said that there are lies. Damn lies. And statistics. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get when we work together for five That's years. That's it. That's exactly right. And uh, yeah. who did Desraeli play for? He was uh, he was reserve halfback for the New York Titans in the old AFL. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. He was known for his diplomacy, as I recall. Plenty of time for Thomas here, and that time Levin hangs on to it, and he's popped right in the mouth as he does catch the ball. I, I'm a little surprised here, James. Are, are you surprised that we're not seeing a little of Nico Ranieri? I am. I saw him warming up yeah, over there on the sideline behind Fairchild. Yeah. Well, one play away. One play away. All these guys, when you look at the starter, hey, we're, we're dead set. We know that Pete Thomas is our guy, but you never know what can happen in this crazy sport of football. Nico Ranieri, a fellow freshman that came in with Pete Thomas, who graduated early out of Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando, Florida. Great quarterback in his own right. But Pete Thomas won the job during fall camp, and they haven't looked back. We did see him warming up, but not in this ball game yet. Well, well I, I was thinking that that's probably the reason what, what you just mentioned, that being that he's a fellow freshman. You know, if he was the reserve and he was a senior, you say, well, you know, we're, we're not really worried about it and getting any playing time, but you would think as a fellow freshman, you want to give him a chance to get some snaps. There he is with the skull cup. There's Ramirez. So fourth down and two. 0 for 2 on fourth down. The Rams today. Blitz picked up. And the first down is picked up as well. Move the chains. Well, you talk about senior quarterbacks. In the first two seasons in Fort Collins for Steve Fairchild, it has been one and done with two fifth-year seniors. Billy Ferris had an incredible one and done year for Very Coach good. Fairchild. They go to the New Mexico Bowl, get the win there, and Grant Stucker last year was the starting quarterback. And here's Pete Thomas from Southern California. Same neck of the woods. Steve Fairchild from Marquise Law tries to go up and over Josh Hall. Reggie Remberts back up, but unable to pull it down. Good coverage, stride for stride by the junior Hall. All right with him and does a nice job of looking back for the ball. And as we've discussed before, you can, I think you can have a fair amount of collisions as long as you're looking back for the ball. Draw to Woke. Check that. There was 
good back in there, and <laughs> you, can't, you can't get rid of them. Twice we've seen them limp off. And Derek Good just wants to be a part of this ball game. And when given an opportunity, he's flashed, that's for sure. Makes you wonder sometimes the quality of ball player that you have sometimes in second, third string if they never get the opportunity to show their wares. There's a swing pass to Yim, run out of bounds. It'll be another fourth down coming up. Josh Hall, six foot, 175. So you go from 5'7", guy over just over six feet tall. Just a junior, another Georgia guy from Atlanta. Back in the infrared zone by Fleer. Thanks to the folks at Fleer Extraordinary Vision. Fourth down and two, one for three. The Rams now on fourth down conversions today. Here comes the blitz. Good job on the pickup. Going a little bit behind the receiver, but Lou Greenwood, who's just learning how to be a receiver, does an excellent job of going back behind his body to pull it in. James, you're absolutely right. They're able to pick up, they're able to pick up the blitz, and the ball is thrown behind, but Greenwood does a great job of staying with it right there. You know, it, it's interesting because I think in that case you had a situation to where Hall actually knocked the ball into him a little bit. It was behind, kind of knocked it into his body and Green was able to hold on. Chris Woke on a first down and goal from the 10, gets it inside the five yard line. So it'll be second and goal to go from the four and a half. Okay's had a had some nice moments here in, in the second half. One of the contributors to 280 yards rushing for Colorado State in this game. And again, this time the pitch to Woke run down from behind. There's Jameel Cooks. Not just special teams, he's a backup linebacker as well. And Colorado State will call a timeout in hopes of getting a, a score before the end of this ball game. It's a 15 play drive offensively in the second half for Colorado State. They put together some decent drives, a 14 play scoring drive the last time out. There you see the West Virginia Mountaineers all over Bobby Houck's UNLV. Rebels. Rebels will take a trip to Fort Collins next week. And not giving up any points, TCU to Wyoming. They didn't give up a point in Fort Collins to these Rams last week. We mentioned earlier our next game on the mountain, BYU hosting San Diego State. And looking for a win, the New Mexico Lobos later tonight against the rivals from the land of enchantment, the as, New Mexico State Aggies. As are New Mexico State. Both teams are looking for their initial right. win of the season. In a rivalry game, I guess you, you know what? I guess you can throw out the records when those two get <laughs> yeah. together. Yeah, the coaches <laughs> hope you do. Good blocking up front as they push the wave of blue back into the end zone. And Chris Woke skips on in for a touchdown. And, and, and fitting pat on the backs of all that offensive line because he knows that was way too easy. The big dogs up front with a good push. 16 well, play drive. James, we've talked about it before, and that is, is that when you're inside the five yard line and you go into the end zone standing up, the people up front are doing an outstanding job. Now, Will Kay's a happy man. Take a look at the distance of that. You're talking about putting together a great drive, James. Look at that. 92 yards over six minutes. But again, that deception of numbers. That ties the most points the Air Force has given up this season. It was a 27-24 loss in Norman, Oklahoma, the only loss 
on the year for Air Force. 49 to 27 with 41 seconds remaining. Here for Troy Calhoun's punch, and he's still coaching him up over there on the Air Force sidelines. Yeah, in some cases, as you look at him, you wonder if his is the winning or losing team. Still, still quite serious, and I was surprised at halftime how angry he was when he was visiting with our Natalie Vickers regarding some of the errors that they were making. But on the other end, you've got Steve Fairchild doing the same thing, coaching up his young quarterback, giving him some, some perspective. Because number four is the future. Troy Calhoun doesn't like what he sees out there on his hands team, so he calls timeout. Well, that timeout will give us a chance to acknowledge our steel man of the game. It could have gone to the special teams or Reggie Rembert, but Asher Clark goes over 100 yards again on pace to go over 1,000 on this season. The man of the game brought to you by Steel to find a full line of dependable steel outdoor power equipment. See your local servicing steel dealer or visit steeldealers.com. A peach of a day for the Georgia guy, Asher Clark, number 17 on this Falcon offense. The tailback gained some muscle and some speed in the offseason. You know, it's interesting how you know, you watch boxing matches and people are supposed to be the same weight. According, according to this right here, he and Reggie Rembert are the same size exactly. Those are two different bodies, yeah. though. Well, it was a hard kick that they tried to bounce off somebody in that front line, but it made it through the first two waves of Falcons and Drew Coleman there to pick it up. And... Were you, on, were you on the hands team when you were in college? Yes. I figured you would be. Thanks, Todd. No, no, I did. I don't even have to ask you because I know you were on the no, hands team. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just saying that in some cases, you know, it's always about skill people. I just had a hunch that you were on that team. Mm -hmm. That's actually no, that, that's not a fun place to be, by the way. I, because I, I, I was standing there, the idea was for me to get the ball. And I mean, bodies are flying everywhere. <laughs> They're really going after you. That first guy is, is taught not to go after the ball, but to take your take head you off. Right. 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 Well, Troy Calhoun, Steve Fairchild, and shake hands, Larry Kerr as well at the middle of the field. And that'll do it, 49 to 27, the Air Force Falcons. They kind of like this top 25 spot and they think they'll stay here for a while. Specialized statistical information provided by Stats this afternoon. And we're just getting warmed up, not just on the grill, but on the mountain. Doubleheader continues at four o'clock as San Diego State travels to Provo to take on the BYU Cougars. For Natalie Vickers and Todd Christensen, I'm James Bates. Ram Post Game Live is coming at you next. This has been a production of The Mountain. So long from Colorado Springs, everybody. We'll see you next time.